get worried, right? When you get worried and stay in that worry phase, you've got anxieties, yeah? Anxiety debilitates, anxiety just paralyzed you. When we hear this message, this news, that kind of overwhelms us, kind of, I don't want to do anything, I just want to sit down or just lie down the whole day. But why worry? Why worry when you can pray? Why worry when you have a God who answers our prayers? Why worry when, when you can just thank God because He is in control of everything? Hallelujah! That's what it says in the Word where Paul is saying, Why worry when you can pray? Bring all these petitions to God. And that's what it's all about. Worry is real. Right? But what do you do with it? You do just, I'm going to keep this in my pocket. When it's time, I'm going to worry. <sighs> hey, we should throw that out. We should not keep worries in our system. That's what Jesus says in Matthew 6. Why worry about food, shelter, clothing? You know, the birds of the air, the Father knows them very well. How much more that He knows you? He knows you by name. Wow, isn't that great? So why worry? And that's the title of our, our message today. Why worry? Why worry? Don't spend time in worrying where it could not add, you know, even a second to your life. It could add the wrinkles. It could add the sad face. Right? I'm happy. I'm really happy for you. But it doesn't show. Because you're worried. Do not worry. Say to your neighbor, do not worry. Do not worry. As I've said, you know, we need to get back into the word. Let's change worry into word. The word of God. Because the word of God is our instruction. It's our answer to debilitating anxiety. Right? The antonyms of worry is, are calm. Collective, of course. There's calmness. You are content. You are at ease. You are at peace. There is serenity. There is quietude or tranquility. There is comfort. There's consolation. Now, don't fall asleep on me, okay? If I say this thing's quiet, tranquil. But these are the opposite of worry, right? Who, who would like to worry then choose the other one? Who would like peace? Who would like to be uh, tranquil? Who would like to be content? No? No one? No one? Can I see your hands if you want to be? Yeah? I'm done. No, you got to be sure. You got to be sure to what you want. Well, Philippians 4, 6 to 7 says, Paul was saying to the church in Philippi, and saying to us, Champion Life Center, Scarborough, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. What's your situation right now? I'm okay. I'm shaken up. I'm overwhelmed. In every situation, I'm content, I'm happy. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And verse 7 says, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? When we ask God... He is able to give us an answer and guard this heart. A heart that the enemy would like to just poke on. Just like to just shake. You know? So that we are shaking. Where do we run? We must run to God. Run to God. Amen. You see, how do we do that? I want to pray. Join our power. Who goes to our power here? Hey, if you have an hour... You know, on a Wednesday, on a Wednesday, join the hour of power. And I believe that we all need to pray. We all need to take that time, you know, as a body. Amen. 
So what do we need to do? What do we need to do to you know, battle worry? What do we need to do to battle all this anxieties? God has an answer. I'm excited that God has every answer to every question, life's question. Do you have a question in life? You know, God has the answer and it's found in the word, not found in the worry. Do you get that? It's found in the word. So let's get on to the word. You see, he gives us examples in the Old Testament and we find in 2 Chronicles 2, 20, 1 to 30, an example to battle worry. So are you ready? Do you want to battle worry and overcome? Come on, you can do better than that. Oh, it's kind of... Amen. 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 <laughs> Come on, let's do it, everybody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, the word of God is powerful. It's a two-edged sword, a weapon against the enemy to battle and advance our maturity in Christ. God wants us to grow up. God wants us, you know, not settling where we're at right now. God wants you to grow up. God wants you to be a dad representing the father. That's what he des desires for all of us. Amen. So, when we read this, we will find the steps that Jehoshaphat took to overcome worry. Are you ready? Are you ready to discover what King Jehoshaphat did? Yeah, we've got a few. Okay, let's go and stand, and stand up and just read. And this is a story. It's just, wow, you're like watching a movie, uh, unfold, a story unfolded before us. Let us all read. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Mayunites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar, that is En Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand. No one can withstand you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it to forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress. And you will hear us and save us. But now here are men from Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance? O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. All the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, a descendant of Asaph. As he stood in the assembly, he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. 
Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord and your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and praise the the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah. And they were defeated. The men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy them and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. The men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked towards the vast army. And they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Beraka where they praised the Lord. This is why it's called the valley of Beraka to this day. Then led by Jehoshaphat, All the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps, lutes, and trumpets. The fear of God came upon all the kingdoms of the countries when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. The kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for his God had given him rest. On every side. Father, as we receive these words, as these words unfolded to our spirit, let us hold fast to the very word, to the very action that you have done upon Israel, upon King Jehoshaphat. You are the God of yesterday. You are the God of today. You are the God that never changed, Lord. So God, as we take on this word, Let us take on the principles of what Jehoshaphat did, Lord. That we may as well too, Lord, take act upon it, Lord God. That we take action upon it, Lord. So Father God, whoever, Lord, in a situation right now, let your spirit, Lord, just dwell upon each one here, Lord, in this place. That you says you are in control, Lord. Father, Let your words be clear to each and every one of us here in this room, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. We give you praise for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Isn't that exciting? Just reading the word. Just reading the word of God gives us assurance. Hey, he is the God that never changed. He's the God that answers prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, we don't need to dwell in worry. But what we do need to do is look at the principles that Jehoshaphat acted on. You know, remember, if you heard the song, you would, and it kind of linger in your mind. What do you call that? The last song syndrome? You always. LSS, right? Well, I want to have a last scripture syndrome too. That we remember the word of God. You know, that we would, you would see it, you would remember it, and you could see it right there. You know, we can have an LSS, last scripture syndrome, that we would, whatever we've read, that it would just retain and just dwell in our mind. Not only in our mind, but our spirit. Because when it does, it gives you that peace and calmness. Oh, we all need that. 
we all need that because of the news that we've been getting, right? Well, no matter what ha- what is happening in, in every, you know, every one of us, God is still in control. He's a God that never changed. So what I'd like you to see is we need uh, to really take a look at the life of Jehoshaphat. As we see, he was loving the Lord and troubles came upon him. You see, those when we love God, you are not exempted from getting troubles, getting attacks. In fact, you will be more, you know, prone to attacks because the enemy wants to destroy us. He wants to steal from us. He wants to kill our faith, right? And not worshiping God. This is what he is always, his mission is to destroy us. But what we need to do is really get a hold of God. Get a hold of him. Get a hold of his presence, you know, in your life. Because nothing, when you are with God, nothing can destroy you. You are shielded by his presence. Hallelujah. But there's one thing we see here. When these three kingdoms have ganged up to destroy King Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat did a reaction that anybody would do. Reacted. He was alarmed. He was concerned. Shaken maybe. Maybe his advisors, let's just surrender, let them, you know, we will be slaves and just work for them. No. But Jehoshaphat, when what we've read, he says, he was resolved to inquire of the Lord. Maybe his advisor says, oh, we, we should just, you know, surrender and submit to them. No, we will inquire of the Lord. This is what we need to do when we are shaken. Do not be, you know, just run away, don't panic, but inquire of the Lord. Go and seek God. Let us seek Him. When we seek Him, we will find Him. That's His, his promise to all of us. That's what we've seen here. That He was firm to seek on God. We go through. I, you might be in a trial right now. You might be in an you know, overwhelming challenge right now. But I tell you, God is greater than any situation. He is greater than any situation. And this is what King Jehoshaphat realized, that God is greater. So what he did was, because you know, God is greater, I'm going to remind myself who God is. That's the first principle that he did. He reminded himself who God is. And we'll find that in verse um, 5 to 9. You know, where we find him, just, he was just saying uh, who God is in his life, not only in his life, but who God is was before he even existed. I mean, the, his ancestors, but he, King Jehoshaphat, even existed. If you look at um, that verse, 5 to 9, says, Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God of heaven? He reminded himself that God is the God of heaven, is the God of our ancestors. You know, how did he know he was the God of our ancestors? Because stories were told. Testimonies were told that God, who God is and what he did. This is what we need to do. That we need to tell the stories of what God has done in our lives. Don't keep it for yourself. This is what we need to do so that our children and their children would know who God is. The God of our ancestors. Because they've heard it. It was written down. It was, you know, carried on to the next generation who God is. The God of our ancestors. He was the, he's the beginning. He's the end. Amen. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's a God who never changed. Hallelujah. You see, he, Jehoshaphat reminded himself that God is unchanging. He's also, he reminded himself that God rules over all kingdoms. He rules over all kingdoms of all nations. Mind you, when he reminded himself of that, 
Well, there's only three of these who's ganging up on me. Man, God is a God of all nations, of all kingdoms. These three are puny. Nothing is impossible with God, though there are vast army. I was looking at, you know, what do you mean by vast? You know, as I was looking, very great in size. You know, very great in amount, degree, and intensity. How great, how intense is your problem right now? How intense, you know, is your situation right now? How great is it right now? I want to tell you what. It's still small before God. It is small, it's still small before God. Because He is Lord over all. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see here how He is a great and mighty God. He reminded Himself. No, Jehoshaphat reminded Himself. You are a God. You are, you know, over all kingdoms. These three kingdoms are no match for you. <laughs> when we remind ourselves that He is a great God, then you will be at peace. Don't you think so? Right? Ah, I'm at peace. No, no one can buy that peace. No one can buy that calmness and contentment. Only God can provide that. Happiness, temporary. When nothing happens, where's the happiness? Right? But the calmness that God brings to you is everlasting. It continues on. When we think about the Lord, how He saved us, how He, you know, He put His Spirit in us, when we think of, you shout, just shout hallelujah, just shout thank you God, you are a God who never changed. We need to remind ourselves. Remind yourself. It is not just on a Sunday. Oh, now I remember. I need to praise the Lord. No, remind ourselves every day in every situation that God is a good God. He never changed. He's a God. He reminded himself that power and might is in his hands. God's power and might is always available. It's not... Oh, it's in the drawer. It's in the back door. No, it's in his hands. Right there, available for you and me. Oh, wait, son, I'm going to get it. It's at the back door. No, his power and might are right there. When you ask him, he's ready to deliver it. When you ask him by faith, wow. Wow. Okay. No, I don't have it. If you don't have it, you, you can't give it, right? But God has it in his hands. Power and might. Wow. And he reminded himself, who can withstand you? No one can withstand you. No one can go against you. Though they go against you, this, it will just be futile. It's going to be no good. It's just going to wasting energy, man. No, enemy, devil, you have no power against me. My God is greater. My God is greater. When you do this, you have that confidence. You will never have this defeated, worrying, you know, with this anxiety. Oh, poor me. No, you have the confidence in God. I tell you, we need to remind ourselves of who God is. Who is God in your life? Maybe you haven't experienced that. But I tell you, when he, when Jehoshaphat read who God was with Abraham, who God was with Jacob, who God was with Isaac, this is the God that never changed. Who God with the Israelites, right? Where they were in captivity and then they were freed. Wow. And they have all this land, all this possession. God gave that to them. He's the same God that God, that he could give the answers to you. The same God you know, whose love is for us as well. Not only a friend of Abraham, he's also your friend because he wants to be personal with you. He wants to be intimate with us. He wants not just, oh God, I, I, I need you, I have a problem. You see, please give me some, please solve this. No, he wants us to be with him 24-7 because he wants us ah, to embrace us, to love us. He wants us to know him more. He's a great God. He reminded himself. How often do you remind yourself who God is? Only when you have a problem? 
Only when things are tough. How many times do you remind yourself of the goodness of God? The psalm is in Psalm 103. Though he wasn't feeling in a worshiping mood, right? He reminded himself, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Forget not. When you say forget not, remind yourself. Forget not all his benefits. Then he, the psalmist started to list the benefits of God. From the east to the west, that's how wide his love is. Wow. From the east to the west, that's how he separated us from our sin. It could not meet. Wow. As high as the heaven. That's how deep his love is for us. Let's imagine that. Remind yourself. Remind ourselves of his love. Remind ourselves of his benefit. Then you will start praising God. Then you begin to thank Him. Then you begin to, wow, God. There's so much things to thank you about. There's so much things to praise you about. When did you last praise the Lord? When the worship lead was, come on, let's praise the Lord. Was that the last time? But even in, by yourself, do you praise the Lord? Do you remind yourself of how good He is? We, because or else, if you do not, just worry will come in. Worry will inject itself. Then you start, oh, am I going to get a raise? You know, $10, $10 raise. That would be nice, right? About your job? $10, yes. I'm... Yeah, you can do it. Nothing is impossible. Are you doing it, you know, in excellence? You're doing it for the Lord? God sees you. He's going to reward you. Amen. Hallelujah. So he reminded himself. We need to remind ourselves who God is in our lives. We need to remind ourselves how great God is. We need to remind ourselves. He is in control. Power and might are in his hands. He is always available. Amen. Second he did. He was resolute. He was resolved. Mark, you know, being resolute is marked by firm determination. Firm. Firm. (laughs) Firm determination, not move. There might be forces outside, but you are firm, determined. I'm not going to, you know, defocus myself on the goal. We have a goal. We have a goal to finish. We have a goal to mature. Do not. Turn your eyes from the goal. Just keep your eyes on the goal. God wants us to mature. God wants to see His likeness, His character in our lives. Amen? Let's be resolute, firm, steadfast, fastened on the promises He has for us. You see how resolute He was? Well, He he was bold and steady. I understand now why we need to be firm and resolute, you know, with determination. Ephesians chapter 4 tells us, no, we've been given pastors, we've been given apostles, teachers, prophets, right? To build up the church, to be matured in unity and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, so that we will no longer be children being tossed back and fro. See, if you're being tossed back and fro, no, how firm are you? How determined are you? I'm going to go here. Oh, this one, I like this better. Oh, this one. Oh, somebody hurt me. I'm going to go here. How firm are you in your faith? God wants us to grow. No longer children being tossed back and forth by waves, the cunning of the enemy, the schemes. Right? He wants us to be determined to be built up to reflect Jesus as he's calling us for a transformation. Right? Does this make sense? Instead of worrying, I'm going to hold on to God. Instead of worrying, I'm going to be resolute and firm and determined in following him. Wow. I pray. That's my prayer too. 
My prayer, and I hope this will be your prayer too, that we, instead of worrying, that we would be resolute, that we would be firm in our faith with God. Continue to follow Him. King Jehoshaphat knew that his ancestors, what his ancestors were talking about, having been knowledgeable of the scriptures and who God is with his father, he received the same instruction to follow him wholeheartedly. Because he had heard, we, they need to hear from us our testimony. They need to hear who God is. With our, uh, to our friends, right? To our family, they need to hear who God is. And not just, oh, I'm going to take you in on a Sunday service. There you go. No, your testimony will tell them who God is in your life. My testimony, your testimony. Amen? We need to be resolute. He says in verse 12, the, the end part of 12, he says, We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. When you do not know what to do, what would you do? I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> when you don't know what to do, you just give up. But Jehoshaphat says, but our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you. Not only that, right? It was not only Jehoshap, King Jehoshaphat who you know, was giving this, but also all the men of Judah. Men, can you raise your hands? Come on. You sure, huh? All the men, raise your hands. All the wives, raise your hands. You're single, you're going to be a wife soon, too. All the women, raise your hands. See they here? All the men of Judah with their wives, right? All the children, you have children? They have, they're in Sunday school, right? Well, we're bringing them into church, right? To church. And all the little ones, says, it says... All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. We cannot just do it alone. We need to bring our families. We need to bring our children to know who God is. This is the legacy. If you're unstoppable, then we need to bring, you know, as we pass the baton, oh, I'm like that ad. I and somebody's running and somebody's, you know, gonna get the, the baton, right? I really loved it. Good work. Media team, good work. You know? And this is what it is. Not just the men, women as well. Not just the women, children as well. And also the little ones to bring them to the Lord. This is about legacy. This is about bringing it to the next generation. You know, in Exodus 20, you may read, To those who follow my instruction, I will lavish them with love to the thousand generation. Do you know what that means? As we bring the, the goodness of God, as we bring who God is to their lives, they will experience the lavish love of God in their lives. We need to bring it to them. Amen. We need to bring it to our wives. Men, we need to bring it to our wives. Women, we need to bring it to our children. That they would know who God is. I'm a product of that. Uh, my niece from my cousin would, you know, can testify that my mom brought us to faith. You know, she, she brought us that so that we could hear the word. And we caught it. And we are bringing it to the next generation. And Sister Power heard the word as well from my brother. And then we took her to church and look at her. God is so good. Right? We need to do that. We need to bring it to the next generation. She says, all the men of Judah, all the men of CLC, whoa, all the men with their wives, all the children as well and little ones. Wouldn't that be, just change that. All the men of CLC will just go before the Lord. He was resolute. It's not just me. I'm going to bring my family. It's not just me. I'm going to bring my brother, my friend, my classmate, my co-worker, whoever, to bring them to the Lord. I tell you next week, if you do that, this is going to be full. This is going to over... We need an overflow. Or we need another place now. Can we have another place? Because we're going to be full here next time. 
if we all do this, right? It's going to be full, it's going to be packed, and we need a video, of another you know, TV there so that they could see what's happening inside here. Woohoo! I'm excited now. Are you excited? I mean, next week will be your anniversary. Unstoppable! It's going to be filled up with new souls to hear the word of God. We need to be resolute, firm, and determined. What God has given us that we need to grow in it. Amen. When we seek Him, we need to be resolute, not just, you know, I'm firm here. Is there another way? You know, if you're firm here, don't go another way. Don't do another way. Seek Him. Let's just seek Him. But, hey, brother, there's, you know, somebody's lending you this money. Okay. Well, God is the answers to our prayers. When you, when you firm and determine, you do not entertain other things. You just entertain God. Amen. Resolute. Mark with, by firm determination. And as he was determined, I'm not going to leave, any, I'm not going to go anywhere, Lord. Then he received. When we pray, we need to stop and be calm to receive. We need to be quiet in our hearts and let him speak to us. Because, you know, a conversation is two-way, isn't it? When we pray, we just don't bring our petitions. Oh, Lord, hear my petition and see. Please answer me now. And then, okay, I'm off now. No, but just be still and know that He is God. Be still and know. Just listen. And I just, Lord, where's my answer? No, receive, just listen. She resolute and firm and determined. I'm not going to go out empty, Lord. I'm going to stay here. And as Jehoshaphat did that, and all of Judah and Jerusalem, they have received. When you're resolute, God will give you a reward, an answer to receive. So are you ready? Not just to remind yourself, not just to be uh, resolute, but also to receive. You ready to receive? Yeah? Ready to receive. Are you ready to receive? Can we do can we can I see a nod of head? Can I hear an amen? Are you ready to receive? Because God is gonna bring it. God's gonna bring your answer. What are you asking him? According to his will and purpose. What are you asking him? You know, his will to be done in your life, he's gonna bring it. He's gonna bring it to you. Amen. So as King Jehoshaphat and all his families, Judah stood before the Lord. Verse 14 says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came to Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, and the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, the Levite descendant of Asap. You know Asap? You can see that in the book of Psalms. Worship. When you have that... See, when we're asking God, there's a heart of thanksgiving, the heart of worship. And... And if you are at this posture and just ready to receive, you will receive. Are you ready to receive? And then he says, the prophet says, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, all who lived in Judah and Jerusalem, not only for King Jehoshaphat, but everyone there, this is what the Lord says to you. Do you want to hear God's voice? Do you want to hear God's answers to you? We need to stay where we're at. Here it is. He says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged because of this vast army. He says, for the battle is not yours. (sighs) Just receive that. The battle is not yours, but God's. It's not yours, but it's God's. So as they... As King Jehoshaphat and all of Judah and Jerusalem stood there, they received the instruction and the information. You see, when we're praying, we just don't need to bring our petitions, but we need to listen. Right? When we listen, we stay quiet. Because or else we just keep on talking. We do not really hear. Right? But when it's just calm. You can even hear a pin drop. Right? 
When you're quiet, you could hear even a gentle whisper of what the Lord is saying is going to bring to us, bring to you. And we see here that the prophets brought to King Jehoshaphat the instructions. I see some, some instructions here. March down against them. You said the battle is yours, not us. Why do we need to march down? You know, if you just kind of screenplay this, and they have this conversation, you said the battle is yours, so so just just stay here. No, there's some instructions. And we need to follow the instructions to see the answer coming to pass. Are you ready to to obey? Are you ready for the instructions? See here, march down against them. And then, it says, the information was, you do not have to fight this battle, but you, dis- you need to march. We need to face it. Right? We need to journey it, but you don't need to fight the battle. The battle is the Lord's. Amen? And it says, take up your position. What's that position? The position of, you know, winning position of a champion. Take up your positions as you are confident, right? As you have this, wow, he's really heaven. He's got the, the Spirit of God in him. To be excited, right? Take up your position and stand firm. Okay. No, stand firm. Okay. Oh, stand firm. No shaking. Please, no shaking. Stand. This is my firmness. Stand firm. Stand firm. Sometimes there's be shaking, but we need to stand firm. Get back into place. Plant your feet on the word of God. We need to anchor ourselves on the promises of God. To stand firm is we anchor, we cling. To those who cling to my words are, they are my disciples, Jesus says. Cling. Stand firm. So he says, stand firm. Take up your positions and stand firm. You know what? You don't need to fight. Just see. You will be witnesses. The deliverance of the Lord. You're going to be spectators. Wow, God is doing all this. Nothing me. There is nothing me at all. But all of this is God's. You know? We better just put, you know, just let God. Let go. Let Him do the work. Just need to stand firm. Say to each one, stand firm. Take up your position. Hallelujah. See the deliverance of the Lord will give you. No matter where you're at right now, God is going to give the deliverance in your situation. Hallelujah. So it says, instruction number three, do not be afraid. Yes, you are alarmed. Yes, you are, you know, there's pressure but says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Have courage. You see, there's fear present, but you just stand and move forward. That's being courageous. Amen? It says, go out, face them tomorrow. See? There's a timeline too. We need to listen to the timeline of God. Sometimes, you know, Lord, I prayed, okay? So it should be tomorrow, all right? No, we do not give the timeline. God gives the timeline. Well, Lord, I kind of need it now, Lord. Please, Lord. No, you need to wait. We need to wait. He's given us timelines. And here we see that he was giving instruction, go out, face them tomorrow. Go out, face them tomorrow. You see, God gives us a chance to rest. It's not right now, because they're overwhelmed. Just imagine that, they're overwhelmed. Rest. Face them tomorrow. But there's an instruction, okay? You don't need to do it now. Just rest. I'll give you just rest and you'll face them tomorrow. That was the instruction. Face them tomorrow. And the Lord will be with you. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> the Lord will be with you. God is with you. Amen. When they received these instructions... They acknowledged the instruction and the information. They were, you know, elated with thanksgiving and they began to worship God. 
they begin to thank God. They begin to bow their heads and thank you, Lord, because you are an answering God. Thank you, Lord, because you do not, Lord God, have your ear away from us, Lord, but you are an answering God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. When they receive the instruction, oh, here's the instruction now. Okay, okay. Thank you. No, don't throw it out. Very, very important. We need not only to receive it, but to remain. That's the next principle. Remain in the instruction that God has given you. Do not deviate from it. Do not turn to the left nor to the right. This was the instruction of Joshua. Right? Just Go with the word of God. Do not turn to the left nor to the right. Remain. Say to each one, remain. Remain in your seat, okay? Remain. So, remain. So as they receive this, the instruction of the Lord, they remain and follow the instructions of the Lord with full intent. Why is that full intent? There was excitement in Jehoshaphat. Because, Lord, tomorrow, tomorrow we will go and face, we will go out and face and, and take our position. Tomorrow, you know what? He was so excited. Early in the morning. Oh, I'll do it later. God wants us to do it. Tomorrow, excited? What God is going to do in your life? When there's instruction, a timeline, be early. When there's service here, be early, an hour early, 15 minutes early, not 45 seconds. No, that's 45 seconds. Where are the people? Oh, oh, oh. No. When Jehoshaphat was just excited, he came out early in the morning. Everyone was ready. All of Judah, all of Jerusalem was ready. Ah, on the 29th, let's be early. On the 30th, let's be early. Well, I'm not going to be here, but I'll be here on the 29th. <laughs> Okay? Be early. Because this is what he did. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow he says, but at daybreak, he was there early in the morning. So he remained in the instruction. He says, do not be afraid or discouraged. This is what he kept telling the men of Judah, all of Jerusalem and Judah. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Have faith. The Lord will uphold you. So he was just you know, affirming, hey, this is what God says. This is what we need to do. Encourage one another. Oh yeah, really? That's what's happening? No, God. God is an unchanging God. He have an answer for you. Encourage our people to have faith. Encourage our people to have faith. So, so you know, God will uphold them. God will uphold you. He says, God, you know, just have faith. We will have success. This is what Jehoshaphat was saying to the people as they march towards to face the enemy. He says, have faith. Have faith. We need to see, say that to our brothers. We need to say that to our brethren. Have faith. To encourage one another to grow up. Oh, man. Have faith. Can we say that? Have faith. No, look them in the eye. Now. Have faith. No, look in the eye. It says, have faith. Have faith. This is what God wants to bring us, to have that faith, that kind of faith. You know, when, when we say this to people, wow, you just blessed me. I, I was knocked down. Man, when, when I, I heard you said, have faith, God's unchanging. Wow, it boosts their faith up. Right? It does. We need, we need each other. We need to consider others better than ourselves. Hey, you're doing a great job, brother. Brother, Yes. I love you, man. Thank you for the water. Eh? I need another one, okay? <laughs> Praise God. So I was told you can, I can preach at the other 6.30. At the other center, I was told I need 30 minutes. So like 3 seconds, no, that 3 seconds. 15, 15 minutes, I'm done. <laughs> But praise God. Let's just remain in the instructions of the Lord. Here, he says, remain. So he remained, right? He was um, encouraging the people. 
Let's do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Have faith. The Lord will uphold you and you will be successful. There, it's not, it's not positive. It's negative. The results will be negative. Whatever that is. You know, you will have a positive result in God. God is going to bring the answer. God is going to bring finances. God is going to bring healing, wholeness. God is going to bring your relationship of your family really strong. The faith of families are becoming stronger and growing as a family. Wow! As he was doing this. So they obeyed the instructions with praise and worship. With thanksgiving. With just excitement. Wow, God is going to bring us the answers. Woohoo! Here we go! Here we are! Yes, 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 yes! Yes, keep on going! Yes, 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 yes! Yes, keep on going! Keep on going! You know, it's not our timing, it's God. When He gives us the instruction, we just continually. As they march, so they were praising, you know, His love endures forever. Right there at the forefront of the army was the praise and worship team. We, you know, as, as we thank God, as we move forward in obeying God, there needs to be praise in our hearts. There needs to be thanksgiving in our hearts. It's not just, okay, I'm going to go. Hmm, I hope the Lord will answer my prayer. No, when you go with praise and thanksgiving and just saying, God, you're going to do great and mighty things in my life, Lord. That's what it is. You will never be discouraged because you, oh God, you are so, so good. So as they were doing this, God was already confusing the enemy. God was already doing the great and mighty things. They never faced the army alive. I tell you, whatever you're going through right now, God is a mighty God. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Because he remained, there was a reward. Why can I just skip to the oh, all the three, four hours, and I'll just go straight to the reward? No, we gotta go through the process, the process of growing, the process of having character, the process of really knowing who he is. If we just go to the reward, oh God, thank you for giving me rewards. But when we go through the the process, you would see that God. It's true to his promise. When we follow the instructions, yes, he did. He did destroy them. Right? So as they were praising God, he was confusing all the enemies. They were fighting at each other. They were destroying each other. They were not destroying Jehoshaphat. They were destroying each other. You know what God can do? When we believe him, all the sickness is being destroyed by itself because God is just taking all that in Jesus' name. Healing comes. Wholeness comes. In Jesus' name, all of that, the pain is gone. In Jesus' name, with praise and thanksgiving, right? No matter what. Yes, I am, I am shaken. Yes, I am alarmed. But God never changed. He never changed. And that's what he's looking for in us. Character that truly believes in him. Having faith in the midst of distress, in the midst of strain, in the midst of all of these things happening in our lives, that to really put our trust in him. He is an unchanging God. You see, when Jehoshaphat reached that area where God instructed them, Verse 25. So Jehoshaphat and his men. Well, 24. Let's look at 24. Hallelujah. They're almost done. Praise God. Twenty-four. When the men of Judah came to the place, because they obeyed the instruction, right? They came to that place that overlooks the desert. And they looked toward the vast army. The vast army that they heard, they're just close by now. The vast army that made them tremble. The vast army that shook them. 
when they looked toward the vast army, they only saw dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. There was no trouble facing them because God has already done it for them. When we face the problem head, you know, headlong, face to face, with the promise of God that God we bring, face it, God will bring victory. God will bring victory. And not only that, and so Jehoshaphat and his men went out to carry the plunder. Oh my goodness. It, one day was not enough. Two days was not enough. It took them three days to carry all that plunder, the reward. Instead of calamity, there was prosperity. Hallelujah. There was so much reward. But that's not the best thing. The best thing was, verse 30, the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace. Money you could have, but peace you don't have. Peace is better. Right? You, you might have friends, but you don't have peace after that. Peace is better. And this is what God is giving us. When we are in His presence, when we are just longing and dwelling in Him, Verse 30, the kingdom of Jehoshaphat, the kingdom you are, you know, who you are, the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for God has given him rest on every side. This is the reward. It's not just the material things. It's more of this peace that transcends. It's all the peace of God that passes all understanding. You cannot understand, but you have peace. Because it's God who's doing the things when you give it to Him. I tell you, we need God. We don't need to worry. But what we can do is to remind ourselves to be resolute, right? To receive from Him, to remain in Him. Of course, that reward is actually just a bonus. Because being in Him, there is fullness of joy. Being in Him, you have such great peace. You are complete in Him. I tell you, when we just remain in Him, the enemy cannot touch you. Yeah, he can bring some pressures, but he cannot touch you. Because you are God's possession. You are God's you know, child, a son to be. Wow. Wherever you're at right now, God is here to meet you. The challenges, the pressures, family, physical finances, God is here. Would you run to Him saying, God, I'm not going to worry. If that's you, brother or sister, as I call on the worship team, decide Jehoshaphat made a choice to do these things and it gave him clear answers. It brought him to a peace where he lived where he was at peace. Would you like to be at peace? He took action. It's nice to hear, oh that's nice, but it would not take place in your life, not until you take a hold of it. I want to do this. I want to inquire. I want to run. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to run to God. I'm going to remind myself who God is. I'm going to remain and be resolved and firm and determined to receive, to remain. Would you do that? As we stand and we will be led by the worship team. The sanctuary is open. Wherever you're at right now, God knows where you're at. And, you know, faith is t stepping out saying, God, I need you all the time. You, you are the only one who can answer me. You are the only solution I have, Lord. He has proven this in the past with Isaac, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
with King Jehoshaphat. He can prove this to you as well when you take these principles that King Jehoshaphat has taken. Would you, as we worship? The altar is open. All you need to do is take action. Lord, I'm in a storm or a challenge right now. I'm in a worry phase right now, but God, I don't want to worry. I want to run to you, Lord God. I want to remind myself who you are, Lord. I'm going to run to you who is everlasting, who is almighty, where nothing can withstand you. If you're that person, step out in faith. Ask God here at the front. We'll pray with you as we worship. Come.